welcome everybody. This is March the 7th, 2022. First meeting in March of the Board of Trustees. Uh, let's get started. Call the meeting to order now. I would entertain a motion to approve minutes of February 23rd, 2022. I second. There's I'll, a motion. I'll second. There's a second. Any further discussion, corrections, additions, deletions for the minutes? Um, I, since you guys went to executive session mm -hmm. at the end, mm -hmm. I didn't really know how to end it. Oh, I mean, I, I, I did kind of just say, well, following discussion regarding matters of personnel, the trustees unanimously agree to adjourn at 6.40. So I gave you guys like 15 minutes of discussion. That's, does that yeah. seem well, what it other than Other than saying, you really probably should say no decisions were made as a result of, okay. the, of the meeting. Yeah, and then and then and then, and then you adjourn. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Ms. Hoyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, we now entertain a motion to approve payment bills in the amount of seventy-six thousand seven hundred ninety-four dollars. 83 cents, broken down general fund, 13,623.98, fire fund, 46,586.76, cemetery, $5,810.94, EMS billing, $2,158.73, road and bridge, $8,623.42, and nothing in the bottom of the Is there any motion? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion regarding payment of those accounts? <coughs> I may have a couple. Mm. What was that? <laughs> Under uh, American uh, Limited Life Insurance, which is our life insurance holder, provider, we have a long list of people insured and some changes. Uh, I don't see Marilyn's name in it. I guess because it just hasn't hit the hit the books yet. I mean, um, um, Steve mm -hmm. Ackley was informed. You talked to Steve yeah. Yeah. about health insurance. Not about life insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, we better get her. I mean, I, I thought I he was taking care of all. I thought he was taking care of all that, but I guess I'm wrong. Okay. I can. I can. So, mm -hmm. so I'll just not, not we could pay good. this, but we may then have to do another. They'll catch up. Yeah, the next time. Was Mark taken from it? Mark yeah. has been removed, yeah. And so is Alex. Yeah. But I can call him early. Okay. <clears throat> so we will do that. I actually didn't oh, know I we I had life insurance. So. <clears throat> I noticed on the uh, most recent U.S. Bank visa bill, we have $131.77 Fees. That's been taken off. Okay. Uh, on is our that reflected in the total on the check? Yeah, no, it is not included in the check sure. because I just paid what <coughs> I paid what we purchased, not the interest and late fee. Okay. Because that is a good image. For our annual payment, thirty thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars to Otarma for <coughs> property, property life casualty vehicle coverage. I noticed that on our list of uh, property breakout for the anniversary of February tenth, twenty twenty-two, uh, we're listing uh, two twenty-five Corey Street that we're yeah. paying a thousand dollars. I talked to her about that today. I said, or, "We don't own that building anymore." So she's gonna. Um, I, I was. I would needed to tell her. <clears throat> I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to ask you anyway. What was our? What was the date of our sale? When did we no longer own that building? So that she can um, pro, you know, rate it, and we'll get a credit Ish. for it. Is it, it you know what? We don't own this building. Like third week in December, roughly. Yeah. Yes, I said I thought it was in 2020. Yeah. <clears throat> but I wasn't sure exactly when. So. 2020. 2020. 12 times. I know. Yeah, so it's been a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Well, now, you know, time's flying. But do we know the exact date? Well, 
Yes. Yes, we do know the exact date. Well, tell me. Do we know it right here and now? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, as long as we can get it. Can we figure it out? Yes. That'd be great. Okay. All righty then. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anything else for the payment of the, of the accounts, bills? Okay. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. On our little baby list of correspondence, we have Heart Industries announcing closing of the Springfield location and Otarma update, newslet, update newsletter. <coughs> uh, our signing board journal entries from February, February, February 25th and March 2nd, MBRPC's March 2nd and 3rd meeting pack materials, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield information package, uh, Ohio Township Association grassroots clippings for March of uh, this year, MTR, MTFR Bath Township activity report for January and February. Miami Township uh, SBA marketing profile incomplete for here. Um, uh, Ohio Department of Transportation's Township stimulus, fund, stimulus funding status, which showed that we were denied, with a great big D, denied by our grant that we put in for um, this the funding, along with every single uh, political subdivision in Green County. Green County did not receive one penny. That's what the cemetery was. Green County Public Health, uh, March 2nd and 3rd meeting materials, Medi-County annual report, one set of revenue status <coughs> for March 7th. Is there any further correspondence in or out this evening? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, first on the agenda it would be the public comment on agenda items. Corey, that's close enough. <laughs> You, know, you don't have to come stay through our whole meeting. You could okay. speak your piece in the house. My piece. The floor is yours. Uh, well, Don mentioned it. So I've been doing the sitting in one of the township spots on the YSTC board since February, March 2020, right before the pandemic. So one in-person meeting and then the rest on Zoom. Um, and then as of February's meeting, I'm now the president of the DC. Um, so, you know, at one point we kind of talked about how the, um, the representation of your organization comes through you in your seat. Um, and, you know, I asked Don if, how that kind of plays out for, for the township. And again, when you were up for election, I thought maybe they're going to want to put somebody, put one of their folks there. Um, and Don said, no, just stay, stay put, keep doing what you're doing. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, but I thought I'd just come by and show my face and see if you have anything that you would like me to know. <laughs> what or you said any questions. Now, now that you're president, did we want to put somebody else? Well, at this point, probably not, because... You can't. I don't good. That's good. That's yeah. Good. Well, we could, and then she would no longer be president. Right. Then you're, yeah. She lose her position on that. We couldn't, because then there would be two elected officials from a three-person board. Well, we could name somebody oh, else, know. but we are, oh, I thought she was referring to Marilyn. Okay. When we reorganized, we named, the first meeting of the year, we named Corey as our, wow. myself and Corey as. And my husband's taking great pride in being the first gentleman of the wife. As well he should. Absolutely. So just sort of as a general kind of direction this year, we're going to be focused on big picture thinking and future thinking. So um, I've asked Don and then the other members to kind of bring forth, or I will tomorrow, because we're just in a subcommittee, so we spoke about it briefly. But we're going to be inviting some folks from other organizations in the community to come and kind of present what they've been working on, but also how they see the, the future direction of the village. And then with the hopes, that using our superpowers where our group brings together all of these different organizations under one umbrella, then hopefully we sort of start to align on what we're building towards. That's the idea. Then we know if things do or do not align with that vision of the town we want to build together. That's what we're doing. And we're having a meeting tomorrow and I'm supposed to bring a list of or date line for levies. Yes. When they run out. So you are going to bring that stuff? 
I will bring something. How complete it is, we'll find out. Yeah, I, I think I, I poked down a little bit the the above. I think that's one of the most important cross organization jobs you can do because the organizations don't seem to be just talking among themselves well enough and, and nobody has said we've got to have a levy you know on this date but this organization and definitely the schools have upcoming levies. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the village stands. But we do because you know, we're, we're in a position now, like the school's having two levies turned down, it's a little, little bit new. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is are people going to turn down all levies? <laughs> or, or do we have to make sure that, that two competing organizations are on the ballot at the same time? We don't, I don't like to think of the township competing with the village or the schools, but voters are going to look at it like, oh, I can't necessarily pick both of these. So I don't think we, we should avoid having that happen. <coughs> And we are in a position currently where um, we're discussing a levy for this fall, supplemental levy, basically an additional levy to uh, to fund personnel costs for the fire and EMS department. Uh, our current operating levy does not expire three additional years, and financially, we're not going to make it through the end of the three years. And then, and then adjust that one. And because of the way taxes are collected, be, you know, behind, uh, you know, a half a year behind or whatever it is, and then the way I understood it from David Graham is th there isn't a, a, um, an election scheduled for next spring. And so if we put it on in the spring, uh, which we could, we could probably last that long. We would have to pay for it ourselves uh, out of pocket. So we've still got a, a lot of little loose ends to tie up. But the one big loose end that we don't have to tie up is that we uh, are short this money, uh, very short, as we move, move along. Not short in the short run, but we have to project out at, at, to keep ourselves uh, solid. And is that because uh, labor costs are rising? It, it's because, oh, a, a myriad of things, and, and I will defer to our, our fire chief to uh, explain why our, our personnel costs have, have uh, gone up so much since the last levy. Uh, I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing is the national trend um, of the death of volunteer-based fire departments. Um, we've gone from 45 volunteers 20 years ago to 12. Hmm. Trying to recruit them and keep them is, is a very difficult task. So we've had to rely more and more on paid staffing. Also, as our run volume has increased um, <clears throat> a lot due to the community becoming older and also the large number of influx of visitors, uh, which drives run volume. So that's, that's driven a lot of this, um, as has our desire and need to increase salaries uh, to attract and maintain people here. Because we've always traditionally been on the lower end um, and competition is fierce as the labor market is um, doing whatever it is it's doing right now. <laughs> no one really seems to know where these where everyone is. But um, you know the example, the great example is Fairborn Fire Department used to uh, they would advertise three jobs and get three hundred applications. They advertised six jobs and they got ten. And it's a good job. I mean, they pay really well, and it's great benefits. But so it's a big competition. But our, our primary driver is just that people don't have the time to volunteer like they did, unfortunately. But that's not just our sob story. That's you know, it's pretty much a national. Actually, I was just at a seminar, and the director of public safety uh, briefed us that in the last three years, the number of volunteers in Ohio, volunteer firefighters and EMTs, has decreased by twenty three percent. So you have decreased. Decreased. Yeah. By twenty three percent. Yep. Yeah. And we had two, two relatively long-term staff leave, taking jobs in the county that was a like 25% increase in pay or 
for one of them, it was a 50%. <laughs> yeah. What, how many hours a month does a volunteer need to commit to? 36 hours a month, but that's after their initial training. Mm -hmm. and initial training is four months for EMT and three months for firefighter. And that's continued education time, so it's, it's a lot more than what I started in the 36 hour class. And, and there was no continued education, which is kind of terrifying. Uh, what made the state change that? But, so yeah, it's, it's evolved quite a bit, unfortunately. Being a volunteer is not just showing up when you feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. So. But it's a struggle statewide and, and nationally for, for departments. And unfortunately, there's always those outliers that somebody finds and says, well, this department can do it. Why can't you? Well, they don't go in ambulance though, so, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that's usually a big driver. So with kind of like the demographics that we have in this town, are you looking, is it likely to keep increasing the number of calls, and, you know, as this population ages? I think so. I mean, as the population, what's the term like you graze, and uh, potentially the village population increases with, with or without housing developments, who knows what's going on with that. But um, I think, yeah, I mean, definitely we'll, in, we'll continue to see an increase. I mean, our run volume has increased steadily every year for the last five to ten years, with the exception of 2020. Pretty much everyone's run volume dropped because nobody wanted to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Which was good for the hospitals, but, <laughs> but, but they were busy. <laughs> but they were really busy. People were getting there somehow. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a big crisis. Um, and actually, Ohio is finally realizing that, and the governor has put together a volunteer task force. But um, twenty years too late. But I don't. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But here in the community, I mean, we've dropped what in, over the last three years. I know we probably dropped close to four thousand dollars on direct mailing campaigns and and all of them netting us zero people. So uh, we spend ninety bucks a month at the Ellsworth News with an ad and the people the few we come in, actually are the few most recent volunteer applications we've received have been people who don't live here. And they're just looking for a place and usually they're here for a few months and then move on to somewhere else and get a part time job. So now, of the 12 volunteers that we have, how many live in the Bill Yellow Springs? One. Two. Mm -hmm. Two, and then we have two additional who live in the township, mm -hmm. the unincorporated township. And then the rest are all from out of town. Mm -hmm. And their motive is to get hours in training? Um, for two of them, I can think they're, I mean, they're more desired. They want to move on a, in a career, and volunteer departments are Usually a stepping stone because most volunteer departments will pay for your training, so you don't have to do it yourself. Uh, the other two, just like serving the community, do good old fashioned volunteer, um, but uh, those are fewer and far between, unfortunately. So. Oh, no. But I think back to volunteers I had in my mind one way back. They were people with full time jobs, mm -hmm. they also volunteered. Yeah, I think one of the things that's changed though is like two working parents. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we still have someone from Cresco? No. Because for a while Cresco was saying they would underwrite volunteer hours in the community. Yeah, we've never had anyone from Cresco, so. But we did have one from Cresco for a while. No? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and part of that I can remember the old the old days. Um, you know, when you had Antioch Publishing and Bernie Labs with several hundred employees and YSI, and they would mm -hmm. encourage and allow their employees to leave during the day during their shift for, you know, for call mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. As those companies have downsized or moved downtown, you know, stopped existing. <laughs> uh, that's, that's been uh, something too, and now, uh, some people would kill me, but I mean, now as we've become, in a lot of ways, a bedroom community, you know, after your commute to Dayton or Cincinnati for a lot of people, you know, <laughs> they want to sit in an EMT class for three hours at Clark State and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's tough. And the guys who still do it, you know, well, I to them and my hat's off. But mm -hmm. it's tough to think of someone, you know, I started with volunteer paramedics. But now no one, no one in their right mind is going to go through a year and a half to two years of training to then turn around volunteer to the community, so it's, uh, 
And it's been a rapid, I mean, it's been 10 years that all this has really changed for us. That we've, we've really seen, I think, a sharp decrease in volunteers. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was always a little fluctuation, but you know, there was a lot of people, older generation who just retired, and then there was no one to take their place. Mm -hmm. so it was graphic in, in the old office, there was three frame <laughs> panels with all the pictures of the, of the fire, everybody in the fire department, and we just watched those panels drain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, another factor for us has also been the struggles at the college. I mean, we used to attract a lot more students when there were a lot more students. Uh, we, we have one. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, she was fantastic. She was awesome. She was fantastic. Cedarville. I mean, she, I'm sure she still is, but <laughs> she's not here. <laughs> Cedarville, it's almost all college students. A large chunk of his fire department are Cedarville University students, mm -hmm. who are also driven. One, there's so many students at Cedarville, but they also it's a it's a mission of theirs to mm -hmm. serve the public. And that's their way. Those students, that's their way of doing it. Most of them are are pre med or nursing students who want the experience and then will leave after the four years and want to med school or work as a nurse somewhere. So. But it helps them for four years, that's for sure. But when break rolls around, they only have 10 people left in, <laughs> in town, so it's, it's a struggle. Definitely. Anything else? I don't think so, unless there's anything else I should know. I'm, yeah, I'm available if you feel like I'm misrepresenting <laughs> my seat that I'm sitting in, too. So. But I understand that you can't actually have two elected township trustees on this mm -hmm. board, too, so that makes sense. No, it, 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 it's also, I think it's important to, to remember that in terms of voters, the majority of the, the people are here in Yellow Springs. But in terms of services the township provides, yes, the fire rescue is for everyone, but the rest of it is for the unincorporated portion of the township. And it's important to keep track of those people, including about half our township is actually Cedarville oriented their school system or whatever, but they are still people that, that these three people represent and, and when we're talking about the township, we have to make sure that we're taking into consideration the, the views and concerns of, of a lot of other people that we don't run into every day. Mm -hmm. And Corey, I'm sure I speak for the whole board that we certainly appreciate the time and effort that you uh, are putting in, contributing to the betterment of the Miami Township. As, yeah. as a whole, um, including the village of Yellow Springs and the village of Clinton. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, I'll let you get back to it. Okay. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Yep. Bye, Corey. Bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yes. I think Colin, this brings us to the fire department. All right. Uh, a little slower. It should come. Uh, in the last, well, it's less than two weeks, too, so I guess it's a little bit. But, mm -hmm. um, since the last board meeting, we've had um, 21 EMS incidents, none of which were in Bath Township. And 12 fire incidents, also none of which were in Bath Township. Uh, take that. Um, I did attend last week the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association Winter Symposium in Columbus. Uh, and one of the highlights was attending a cocktail reception in the Rotunda at the State House with state legislators, which I thought was a real novelty, and then realized, or was made to realize, that they do that a whole lot. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole lot of drinks and snacks going on at the State House. I never really thought about that, but um, so that's a reason right there to be elected as a state legislator. Uh, but I did get the opportunity or, to... Or a lobbyist. Or a lot. yes. I did get the uh, opportunity to speak with Senator Hackett. Always a treat. And the yes. <laughs> that was a, that was an interesting conversation, uh, and then our uh, state rep was not in attendance. We're still up in the air, sort of what district we're going to be in, and who who who's going to represent us in the future. Yes, they were uh, our our executive director, who's also a lobbyist, was was um, impressed that the turnout we did get, just because there was still the crisis in the redistricting thing. It was a very nice event. Well, the faces will change. It just may be the places at the table <laughs> exactly. will be different. But. Exactly. 
Um, okay, there's a little bit of spelling Can we there. get to the bun band? Yeah, the I'm bun band. There are no more buns permitted. You must go only with hard rolls I'm or croissant. Well, I tend to burn my buns <laughs> when I'm That should really be burn stuff. band, but I guess burn. I was so excited to you type it, I just <laughs> type bun band instead. Uh, anyway, we had uh, you should, you left out a R in oh, okay. Friday and Saturday we had uh, three field fires. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice, nice breezes. Too. Nice breezes all days that you should never burn, but apparently one person in particular who we're, I got to go back, but I'm pretty sure she's now had three fires <laughs> over no, the years. No. With her permit, that clearly states no burning when the wind is blah, 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 blah. Now I've it? heard that, there's a, that statewide <laughs> there are three months. There is now, statewide, not now, it's been there for years, but um, beginning March 1st, which we're kind of behind the dates there, but March 1st through May 31st, right? Yeah, there's three days, uh, is the first statewide burn ban. Wait, 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 no burning at all? You can have a campfire. Campfire. And people, this is the fun part. Um, the state burn ban is in effect March through May, and then again October and November, from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. But, so everyone's always like, well, I'm going to burn at night. Can I burn it? No, you're not allowed to burn at night. So you have a window of approximately 45 minutes <laughs> to have your fires. So we pretty much don't issue any permits during these months, which makes it a lot easier. So. so besides campfire, people are burning trash or burning prairie, or what are they doing? Uh, they should not be burning trash. No. That is okay, the law. so but what are we burning besides campfires? What, what, are, what are causing the fires? They Sticks. are burning brush. 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 It's township <coughs> residents. You cannot burn within the corporation limit ever. Uh, that is that is forbidden. Forbidden. Um, wow. I mean, you can have campfires and, or residential fires. And everybody always so jokes with their brush. I've got a hot dog on a stick. Recreational yeah. fires are permitted, yep. Um, or a bonfire, a ceremonial fire. You can have a bonfire? No. A ceremonial bonfire, yes. During a, during the band? Depends on the size of the bonfire. We have to permit it, so you can. Oh, yeah, you need a permit. So, I mean, my thing has always been just stop burning people. For a community that's so concerned with the environment, we are burning crap left and right. Uh, <laughs> but um, we will publicize publicize that out on our uh, social media channels if there is a burn ban effect. So. so you have campfires. Or yeah, like the state park, fire? they can still Is that, what's the have difference their own campfire. campfire or a bu uh, three feet, but no still bigger than three feet okay, by three feet. Good. Like, I, I'm just asking. They could be park. busy going out to John Bryan all summer long. And oh Lord, that'd be yeah. no fun. Okay. Putting out fires. When, when you get a permit, there are things that specify that you have to be a certain distance away from any structures and trees and all of this. But people just have a great deal of trouble following the rules. And if they did, they could probably burn all year long. Yep. But, yes, but exactly. they don't. And nobody seems to understand how how adding a little oxygen to your fire, i.e. a breeze, makes it much hotter well, and, and easier to spread. Something interesting, I mean, one of the fires was a discarded cigarette. Um, the other two were people who were burning, who should have known better, and then, oh, it's windy, and then there went their fire. But um, we were just talking about this today. When I started, we never put on the burn permit, when I started this career, we never put on the burn permit that you couldn't burn during a red flag warning. Red flag warning is high fire danger because we never had red flag warnings east of the Mississippi. Uh, Friday and Saturday, we had a red flag warning. Um, and last year, there were 18 days of red flag warnings in Ohio. And that is... How is that notified? Is that yeah, where the are, news? Or how where are red flag person? warnings posted? Sometimes on the news. Um, yes. On a flagpole. A, uh, I mean, yes, actually, if you go to Cedarville Township, they always put up a flag for And then the weather report. Yeah, weather report should have it. National Weather Service will put it out. Online um, weather report, yeah. But they just, the state luckily makes it easy for us and just says you can't burn these months. So. Or in October, November, when the fields are really dry, typically. So. Well, we should put out more publicity about that. And then there's I'm, always that one wise acre who's got to be like, well, but it's been raining for five days. Why can't I burn? Because the state's in some. And the fines are substantial. Ours are not, but if we are mean and turn you over to ODNR, they can actually fine you 10,000 bucks. So. So no. Speaking of fires and bun, and bun bans, uh, <laughs> now that you're uh, well practiced in putting out fires and bun bans, try this spring to schedule burning cemetery, if you would, please. Oh, I guess it was last year. 
I know, but it's just okay. Yeah, overwhelmed. No, it just seemed like it was late yeah. yesterday. Yeah, every every year. Well, it's supposedly every two years, but oh. the way it's overgrown, grown, it just has a hard time. Well, you got that good prairie and good so weeds. Well established <laughs> root systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll actually? check it out and see if we can get in there before the, uh, yes. everything greens up. I was hoping you'd burn it from the you know, guy burn it thing, or you can't burn it now. Well, I can't burn it. Well, no, we can. That, the fire training is still permitted, but we've got to follow the same. I mean, like, if it's windy, we can't burn it, obviously. The last thing I want to do is <laughs> burn the rest of the center. <laughs> or the fence. That's always my nightmare. Yeah. Like, Guys, wet that fence down. Do not burn Chris's fence. <laughs> Is your brush truck out of service? No. Okay. But I do need to talk to Dan after this meeting about getting it better in service. I said we need his help. Okay. Well, we needed his help need too, more, actually. I should say there. publicly a big thanks once again to Dan and Brandon who saved the brush truck on uh, Friday when uh, it looked dry and then they uh, someone drove off and it <laughs> oh. just got stuck right in the mud, but. Luckily, I caught Dan before he left for the day, so it worked out really well. Um, it yeah, looks like it came out really quickly, too. Oh, yeah. Cool, right? yeah. Um, so anyway, that's the uh, the saga of the burn ban. Uh, and then I forgot to put this on because I typed this earlier in the day, and then breaking news uh, with the CDC's change in mask guidance. Uh, our guys have been wearing the N95 masks on every call, so we're allowing them to go back to just wearing circular masks mm -hmm. on the calls. With, with a few exceptions, mm -hmm. but nursing home and other things like that. But that should make them happy. Um, what about, in, what about in the building? In, in here? Mm -hmm. uh, we're not asking except the one guy who's not vaccinated. Okay, what about, in, say, in a public room? Oh, I mean, you, you, yeah. you've got the sign in the front. Right. Uh, well, according to the CDC guidance, the newest guidance <coughs> from the CDC, uh, masking is not indicated inside a public building at our level of community spread. Regardless of vaccination status? Correct. According to the CDC, on their, they now have green, yellow, orange. Mm -hmm. It's not red, but, um, and Green County has just dropped recently from yellow to green. So mm -hmm. basically the only guidance the CDC has at this point is get vaccinated if you're not, and you can wear a mask. If, if you're immunocompromised or something like that, you should wear a mask. It's a, it's a personal decision. It's a personal decision. So, so by green, the, uh, green County is green. Yes, most of Ohio actually is dropped. There's only 100 or 350 cases yesterday total yeah. in the state of Ohio. Yeah, I mean, the bad parts are the no. southeast Ohio has some of the higher rates at this point, uh, but they also have extremely low rates of uh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. Green County has the highest rate in our area, mm -hmm. which is impressive. Um, what else you got, Chief? That's it. That's all I got. Uh, are are your volunteers uh, running to the treadmill to be able to um, exercise? Uh, no, they are not. Okay. Uh, are they? Working? I have been in touch with G and G Fitness and uh, reminded them that they owe us a visit. Okay. So just checking. Anything else for the fire department? Marilyn, help. No. Oh, I just so you guys are aware. I think Marilyn knows this, but. March, April, April 24th uh, is Earth Day, and uh, I agreed to again host the, uh, yeah, not personally meet, but the parking lot hosting the wildflower Excellent. people yes. event again, and uh, I'm waiting to hear if the firefighters The native, native. Sell hot dogs again. Native plant group, or Ohio, or Yellow Springs as a, well, it's not just native plant, it's anyway. Habitat. Ha native habitat, wildlife habitat. That's it, wildlife habitat. What is that again? April 24th. And that's Earth Day because they were also having a Habitat Day, too. Oh, maybe it's Habitat. I just assumed it was Earth Day. Day. Yeah, well, that's a great transition into what I was going to ask. Uh, we haven't talked about this for a while. Uh, Don, have you arranged to purchase any of the trees that you had? had Planning on doing this spring at this point? Uh, not trees. I haven't made what I'm after is, and I haven't made the arrangement, but planting the the swale and the drainage mm -hmm. pond. Mm -hmm. um, 
No, I haven't. But I don't. We didn't use up the four thousand, did we? No, it's still waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> did the did the detention area, pond, whatever you call it, have water in it this morning? It did. Okay, so it is doing a, a it job. The detainer. It's the day one. Wasn't it? I mean, it wasn't flooded, mm -hmm. but it was more than I've seen. Yeah. The, April 22nd is it. The dramatically oh, scaled down, I mean, there were many ideas for different plants we could have, and my notion is to have It's not a grass, but I will call it a grass. Um, it's a, a native plant that we would only need to mow like once a year in that area. Uh, we will need to, uh, it's, the ground has settled some. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need to both it's debatable. Some people say you don't need to kill off what's there, but if, uh, I'm thinking if we just add, and I'm looking at Dan as I say this, <laughs> he sees you. Add some <laughs> some soil that will therefore smother what's there and bring it up to the level of the drain, and then put in the the native. Trying to come up with the right word other than grass. Sedge? Sedge, yeah. It, uh, and if that succeeds, then maybe next year we would have some other things added. Uh, and I have not been in touch with the neighbors who have said that they would be interested in a flower bed, but that's a different project. And I'll say one thing if you've got established vegetation, it takes more than a couple of inches of dirt to stop it. It'll just come right up. Well, and it's, well, some people say that the sedge competes well okay, with well, the grass, sufficient. and others say it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't. Well, I, I wouldn't want to see too much dirt in there. And we've had this conversation a couple of times, but yeah. it could compromise the design of the, the swale, which has been engineered to, to drain at a certain rate over a certain and amount of time. The only argument for dirt is bringing it to the drain level. Mm -hmm. That is, right so now there are areas problem. that wouldn't even drain. Mm -hmm. But they, they would they would dry out, or they would. I, I don't know if there's I don't know if there's material underneath the floor of that, and I, I don't really want to know. So we'll let that go. It would be possible. You know, just, it has to be able. To Wick, right? The water has to be able to go through. You can use clay. The way I understand it, the critical thing is that whatever you put down there stays there and doesn't wash into the dry well. Yeah, I wouldn't want that either. That's for sure. So it's, it's a little bit of a delicate operation. Yeah, well, it's definitely on my list. Okay. Um, if there's such a thing as sedge sod. <laughs> we mentioned it's just what you would want a couple of minutes ago when Corey was here, but just to move on a little bit with the idea of, uh, of, a, of, a fall, of a fall levy, I did a little bit of research, looked back 10 years uh, in our department's uh, uh, requirements, how much we use for salaries and, and benefits about 10 years ago versus what we're using like last year. And, you know, it, Theoretically, it's funny that David Graham, he must know things that I don't know, but that he had put out that a, a two mil uh, additional levy would uh, generate about 400,000 a year, uh, which would just about cover that shortfall mm -hmm. and, and then allow the operating fund to fund other things that we're trying to right. fund. I mean, we wouldn't need more, we just need to back off right. what, we're, what we're drawing down on everything else. So it may be, you know, it, it may be that I don't, I don't know how much more research. And I guess we can do more research uh, on the four hundred thousand. But uh, hopefully, you have thought about this or will think about this in the in, in the coming future. And, and yes, I yes. agree with that number or, or or suggest one of your own. Okay. Because 
Time marches on. <laughs> Anything else for the fire? Cemetery and road. Okay. Since the last meeting, we've had two burials. One was a scattering, and then we had a full burial. We're going to have a burial Thursday, ashes. Mr. Lewis. And I got one for the evening. Oh, I need to straighten up the fence up there a little bit. Cemetery part of the you know, see. Yeah. I pulled back up over right after the fair, so probably wouldn't say you go for any part. Tighten it up and put some more. Single post or two. Mm -hmm. Tighten it up and we'll get it. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. I'll have the cemetery built to you right tomorrow. Good. Good. About the same as last year, actually. Clifton Cemetery and Clifton Village? No, village, I don't have that name. I like to write up. Bill for mowing and weed eating, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's about the same as last year. Mm -hmm. I'll have a cemetery bill. Or the Clifton Village, probably about the same, too. Okay, let, let, let's not try and let that slide too far into the year, because as you know, it takes half the year just to get. The green township to respond. Well, you know. she can get turned into this week. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it'll get on. I'm going to dump it as soon as you know, we get the invoice from Clifton Cemetery to call. Yeah, well, have a cemetery board meeting, and we will bring in um, Mr. Waddle from Green Township. Mm -hmm. you know, chop chop. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, great. Get yeah, we'll take care of it. Are the polls making any progress? They're cut. Are they? Yeah. Are they palletized? They will be. Abandoned? Tied on. Okay. Fired on somehow. All right. I say you want them. Or one tomorrow. Um, I'll get I'm not sure what you're talking about. about. Hold, hold. For you the know the, the new signs that we've been oh, putting okay. in the cemetery? Yes. No, no. These, are the, these are the poles that came in at 18 or 20, 20, 21 foot lengths, and we cut them to size, and then they have to go to Springfield to get power coated, powder coated, and then. They shorter this one. Yeah. You want me to try to put some of those in? From seven to six or six to five? Six, we got six. Yeah, we got six. We should have had seven. Yeah, that's what I thought you told me. <coughs> yeah, we're going to have to look back on that bill and see if we paid for it. I think it says six. Hmm. But I you didn't try and put it together? No. no okay. No, I'll wait. See what you said. Well, you want me to do it? I'll try it. You, you got 20. I've got it. Eighteen. Yeah, you get three out of us, too. Yeah. So I've got pieces I can use. Oh, that's right. I can um, put pieces together and make... Well, try it. Okay. I'll, do it. I'll try it. What else is going on? Uh, that's it. Then you get back to see me. Mm -hmm. And soon after, mm -hmm. you can get taken care of. You can move the Okay. <laughs> Uh, has Roger been in there? He, he was over and picked up some leaves the other day. He, he dumped two pilots down by Jimmy. There's still a lot down in the lower part of the world picked up. I don't know if he plans on just chewing those up for him. He, well, he, he, he charges us for that. I know. Yeah. I know. I'll call him because he was going to straighten up his stones too. Yeah. I'll call Roger tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of straightening up headstones, has Brandon straightened up any more than the list that we gave you? Uh, he done a couple more besides the one. Mm-hmm. He right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he's got the time. Mm -hmm. No. Anything except right? So where are we roads? Um, tomorrow morning I'm cleaning the ditch for bath. Mm -hmm. We're good last week. We got those done. We did tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, servicing the doors. We got the good season. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. Um, are, are we straight with the county on what our collective bid's going to be? Yes, except for the cemetery. Okay. And I put on there talking you know, about the cemetery, but I didn't have any footage of this or anything. I talked to her about that. And we're waiting to find out. Okay. I showed you that from, from Greta. On the first floor, right, that list. 
of the gravel and right, what they want to do. Can't we use that to tell the county what we want? For them to come in and do their reclamation? Yeah. I can ask her right because I didn't talk about that. We talked about what the hell the paving was. But oh. I didn't list any footage put the paving in the collective. Okay, well, let's get that put together. Well, I'm, I'm going tomorrow night to the uh, engineer's presentation to the Township Association. You going? No, because I'm going to that zone with um, class and I chose that over the engineer's presentation. Would you highly well, recommend one, it? Well, I mean, one's Tuesday and one's Wednesday, so I understand, <laughs> but. I mean, I would recommend both, but it's free ride if you want it's it. It's your call. <laughs> Topic? It's the engineer's report to the county, essentially. You learn about all about the, the road paving and how much is being done, you know, issues in the county. Central Bank, we're responding. It's, it's, not, it's not township. It's, it's not township oriented to specific townships, but it is townships. All the townships, that's what the meeting is about. <coughs> what am I going to say? Hmm? What am I going to talk to about? How do I approach her about getting some material on that list? Because they don't offer like reclamation for a collective. Okay, well, maybe we'll have Greta do that. And okay. I don't know. Have, have Hensley do that? And Hensley's do that right. And the, yeah. I thought the paving part, we could get them to collect. Right. Well, we still can. But okay. I was waiting to see if you got your, your grant. Right. right. Okay, no grant. So you want to go ahead and add it to yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. And, and do that area around the shed that you said you thought was bad. Yeah, like that stretched up through there. Oh, right up around the corner. Water right. laser, if we can mm -hmm. raise it up, that'd help. Okay. Yeah. Get that covered. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll call up with you. You good with that? Yes. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you. Anything else? Did you think about Katie Rose? Because you called me Friday one. Oh, yeah. Your decision was. Um, if you made one, I said we met tonight. So I'd let him know. It's got to be done. I mean, we can't. We can't put it up out there. plow on just a, a cabin chest. Cabin chest. Put put the truck together. Oh. Yeah. So I'll call them. Right. Okay. It's they the, said they'd pick the truck up for us too. Good. Go That's the company that yeah. that puts the Build the, the dump bed on the on the cabin chassis. They put all the hydraulics in. They put all the emergency lights on. Uh, they put the snow plow mounting, mm -hmm. and you know basically get it ready for what. We for what we use it for. And we're using our spreader that we have in the building up there, so we yeah. buy a spreader or yeah. take our spinner. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll call it Do you think um, taking the old truck to uh, what's his face uh, is still the best thing to do, or to put it on the county's gov deal? I don't whatever. know if Dodge is still doing it. Is that right? I don't think he's done it for a couple of years. Really? So then we'll just put it on the we'll put it out for that use use thing that the county has. Because I don't know. It'll have a plow with it, you know. Yeah. We took the simulators off because one of them was worth making a lot of noise and I took it off and it was pretty stud for Really? So I fixed those. Mm -hmm. Of course we put some paint on the pig. Yeah. Kind of fixed it up a little bit. Hey, turn the camera off. Oh. It looks good. It looks it looks good. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who paints their pig? Uh, uh, they came out of the can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we good? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Piss cloth, sir? Mm -hmm. Yet another resolution amending the temporary appropriations. <clears throat> This is Resolution 2022-12, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now therefore, the trustees authorize the amendment to the following temporary appropriations in the general plan I increased other insurance by $4,440, and that's our uh, Otama, mm -hmm. um, the insurance bill every year. Uh, increased telephone by $136 in Road and Bridge. Increased um, OPERS by $44. 
uh, in Rhoda Bridge, increased garbage and trash by 200. Uh, repairs and maintenance increased by 69, and also increased telephone by 69, and then the insurance for Rhoda Bridge, it was increased by $2,675. In the fire levy fund, increased training by $318, natural gas by $228, Contractor services was increased by $335. Um, other employee benefits was increased by $777.77. Suspicious. <laughs> well, there's a clear explanation of that. But anyway, and then increase um, uh, buildings by $77. Uh, and EMS billing, I increased operating supplies by $750. Not $770. No, I know. I didn't realize these numbers were all jiving mm -hmm. like that until I was typing it on. I'm like, oh, look at that. Anyway. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2022-12? I so move. I second. There's a motion and a second for the discussion regarding this resolution. Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Now I'm going to turn the floor over to Marilyn. Oh for your uh, list of questions that you had for Yeah, she, for you want to go through them even though she answered them? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, okay. I mean, as, unless you're, you know, are you satisfied? Uh, I, there's a couple I didn't understand. Um, I think it's good for the record to have some of the discussion. Okay. <sighs> Margaret went through and gave us copies of last year's appropriations and this year's appropriations and mm -hmm. fund status and everything. Um, and Chris and I went through it, and the first little flag that came up was, are we following along? Um, you betcha. Contracted services in the general fund. It was 33,000 last year. No, yes, and 16,000 this year. Um, Margaret says that was because we had a double T, we paid double T roofing last year. $16,000. $16,000, and so it kind of doubled. And so we go back down to just 16000 this year, and she adds to keep your fingers crossed. So. <laughs> that was kind of a joke about the roof repair. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it you know, should be fine. <laughs> so. and, and it has been reimbursed, so that money's back in the accounts. So that sounds kosher to me. Okay. How about anybody else? All right, and then the second one was that as you're going through Margaret's proposed budget yeah. for Well, the, yeah, she had seven right. questions, I so I just, answered the seven questions. Actually, I had 25 yeah. questions, but me and Chris whittled them down. <laughs> and then he said, oh yeah, this, and, and then we, we stuck with seven. Um, and that's after the general fund. Seven's the magic number, remember? Yeah, it's, it's seven. <laughs> well, that is. Okay, let me start from the beginning so I see where I am. All right, that was one. And the second one was also contracted service, this time in the cemetery fund. And this all has to do with column bearings. Last year we had 71,000 appropriated, this year 80,000. And Chris, I thought you s there was a re we might not need that, but let me see what Margaret says. She says, as you can see, the report for this appropriate, no, wrong one. Um, and the I remember the, the, your question, and then my answer is number two. The Fillmore payment was for, well, as you can see on the report for this appropriation, we paid 16600 for one columbarium. We will be paying that amount again upon delivery. The Fillmore payment was for the bases and the columbariums. There could very well be other costs associated with the install of the columbariums. So the twenty twenty two eighty thousand dollar appropriation total does not mean we have to spend it. And as we talked during the meeting, yeah, we thought, well, that's all from last year's expenses, and we're not going to spend those again. However, when you add up another columbarium and the paving and reclamation for the cemetery paths, not roads, uh, which it, probably will be somewhere in the $50,000 range. You're not going to be that far off, so we decided just to leave the 80 yeah. standing. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, but I, I did explain that you know we don't have to pay the we're going to have to pay another sixteen thousand for another column bearing when it's delivered, but we don't have to pay the film more. You know, you just so you add this, you subtract this, and it kind of was you know. That's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's kind of inconsequential. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, the third one, I think, what fund was that? In? Special levy, levy and fire. Um, you. The Ohio, Ohio Police and Fire Police and Fire Pension Fund. Um, now read my response. Okay, it went from first. Let me tell the people. It went from sixty-nine thousand to one hundred twenty-three thousand. What? Yeah. Well. Well. As she's more Okay. The, in the first two months, we paid eleven thousand eight hundred to the to, to the, okay. the fund, mm -hmm. the retirement fund. Mm -hmm. So we multiplied that by six, you'll get seventy-one thousand. We just hired a new full timer who will be paying into the fund as well. Well, we'll be paying for them. So that number will go up a little bit. My wild, this is Margaret speaking, my wild calculation was based on all salaries paid, whereas most of the folks do not pay into the, the Ohio Police and Fire, Police and Fire Fund. Fund. Right. So she says, quote, my bad in the original appropriation. Yeah. That's, so, that's how I got. That's how it became so inflated because I was basing the um, the percent, the point twenty four percent that we pay yeah, on on all the salaries, and then I realized, well, that was dumb because the, the, the only the only the technical term for this is my bad. Yeah, yeah. I totally like was like, whoops, my bad. I see now what I've done. So, so we kicked that back down to yeah, so a little bit back. above what last year was. Right, because we're going to have, we're gonna have you know, salaries have gone up. If there were five of us in the pension plan. That is yeah, and there's five in the pension plan. So, I mean, so last year was 69,000. This should be this year it should be about. I, I, whatever, whatever yeah. I said. <laughs> you said. No, you didn't guesstimate anything. We're not staying with 123,000. No, 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 so, no, I think I put in there maybe. I, don't I, did, I thought I added a. 80,000 maybe? Yeah, I thought I said 80,000 or something like that. Oh, 71,000. Yeah, 70, got okay, it. Yeah, got anyway, it. Yeah, and, yeah. Anyway, got it. Yeah. I see. I didn't understand what that was. Okay. And then medical and hospitalization right below that. I don't know why that's there. Um, it's, I, except for, why do we put that, Chris? Because it kind of stayed the same, and we wondered. It was 63,000. Well, we walked through it. 63,900 last year and 65,000 this year. Yeah. We decided that's probably. Although and everything's go, everything goes up, you can't. Although she says medical and hospitalization numbers are very similar to the OPS, as you can see, we have paid eleven thousand so far in the first two months, mm -hmm. and times six, that would be seventy-one thousand. So yeah, maybe yeah, we should. But, yeah. Well, we we you know we we'll add if we have to. Okay. But, you know, this is. I'm not. Um, okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I appreciate your, what you're doing so far. So. You know, especially that. So far, okay. but don't keep okay, it. Okay, halfway. No, no, no. But it's, you know, these are good questions. I wasn't, I didn't feel insulted. Well, we also right. had, in fire, we had five months with one person. I mean, Alex was gone, so we weren't paying for his insurance oh. anymore. Mm -hmm. And so this year, just, yeah, yeah. Chris has picked up insurance. So that'll take us back to where we were. Mm -hmm. So we'll just leave it. Well, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't oppose a 10% cushion. Well, whatever. Ten percent would be seven thousand. That'd be seventy-eight thousand. Hmm. Well, you just scratch out what it already went change to. It already no. went through. Uh, it didn't go up automatically on your two or three percent because you changed the figure. I'm talking. I'm okay. answering my own question. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome, Chris. <laughs> <That's> very smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then in the same fund, fire and rescue special levy. Um, motor vehicles, we appropriated zero last year, and we put 50,000. I love how she says this. Um, no dollars for Read that. Not till later. True, no dollars were appropriated in 221 for fire motor vehicles. I put that 50,000 in there just because I could. <laughs> Quote, unquote. It can be reduced or completely eliminated if you choose. We choose. It also can sit there until we need some of it. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have any money to put in there. Yeah, well, I mean, well, the budget, you know, the amount, our revenues, you know, but I know, but I just put it in there. And we can, I, I know, because you, you could. You can, you can, you can, we can take it out. Take it out. 
Oh. I just thought, oh, well, when I was doing it originally, I thought, oh, look, there's money there. Cushion. Put it in the pension fund. It, it'll be it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you know, this, this, these numbers are all viable. Anyway, so yeah, take that out. Fine. That's easy peasy. No new vehicles. Nope. Not yet. Colin, Go if ahead. you retired and then we rehired you, we wouldn't have to pay as much. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> oh, you'd have to pay more in salary, trust me. <laughs> Less in pension. This is the one's in the next fire fund, the one that's not a special levy. Um, EMS billing. No. What? EMS billing, yeah. No, it was salaries. Yeah, for, for the EMS billing account. Oh, the EMS billing account. Yeah, that's you right. wonder why are we having why do we have money there when we pay sal what, you know what's being paid out of there. Go ahead. Yeah. Read your question. One hundred fifty six thousand last year appropriated, thirty seven this year, thirty seven thousand this year. And that's two thirds. Your explanation is two thirds of the overtime salaries are paid with this appropriation. We have paid eight thousand in the first two months. Times six is forty nine thousand nine hundred sixty eight. So, what you're saying is we're not paying as much overtime. What are you saying? No, you at, your question was what 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 are you paying out of this this salary line? What is it for? And I said it's because the way we break things, we were breaking things down is we yeah. pay we we pay um, salaries out of the the twenty one ninety one when there's overtime. The overtime um, is split. One third is paid from 2191, and two thirds is, pay, is paid out of EMS billing. Mm -hmm. That's what that salary line's for. That's what we've been doing. In years past, we've done, we've gone, you know, just in the way to help the 2191. We paid sometimes we just paid straight salary out of EMS billing, and we've moved that that around because that's our. I don't know what the term is, but the salaries line for the fire is our. Is our cost of air? Or it is yeah, a financial. For, it, the, just always looking second. for a place to pay. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just finding ways to pay them. And uh, um, okay, um, the the reason the reason that we didn't. Uh, uh, I have have more than the thirty one thousand is because all this money was being put into other accounts which shouldn't be there. Uh, we need to zero out. Uh, machinery, equipment, and furniture. We need to zero out uh, the seventy-five thousand for motor vehicles. Um, and I'd have to look and see what we sp spent last year: twenty-five and ninety-five. Okay, you did spend that last year. So, at least the the, the hundred thousand dollars for motor vehicles, machinery, equipment, and furniture should go into the salaries, and that will bring it up to about what we spent last year. Yeah, just mark it, mark it up. So, and I'll read the permanent appropriation. Zero out the machinery, zero out the motor vehicles. And so then that would go up here and yes. be closer to last year. Right. Yeah. Just cross out what you cross out and add that number, whatever it is, 100000 or whatever, to salaries, and I can do it. Okay. Um, and just because it was weird that there was 156000 last year and only thirty seven this year. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it was weird because, you know, it's different. And it's weird. There it's was a reason. <laughs> it doesn't reflect what's being paid. Okay, well, motor vehicles was the next one, and Chris just answered that. Um, I just have to read this. The actual projected revenue plus encumbered from 2021 is 210000 Because you said, how can right. we, yeah. we, why are you appropriating this yeah. much when we only have 79, whatever it was? And so, well, you I, weren't looking at I, that. I Again, I put the motor vehicles line in for, this actually has quotes, for the fun of it. It's so fun. It's so fun to think of a new Even fire truck. Even a principal officer. Margaret, I am glad that you have fun. Well, I, no, she I has won't. fun thinking of a new fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> the scenario remains the same for that line, blah, blah, blah. You know why? Okay, that's I cool. That's it. Because I can, and we, it's not, um, it's not steady. Yeah. That's, that's it. I just want to see if you guys are paying attention. So, uh, we have to adopt the, the the formal appropriation for the rest of the year by the end of March, correct? I, yeah, I would like you That's to do me. it now. Is there a motion to adopt formal appropriations in the amounts as we've discussed with Marilyn?
corrections. So what she has there is the formal copy. Mm -hmm. She's made, yeah, she's, the chicken scratch. That's the yeah. informal copy. What she has there is the formal copy. Well, I'm going to create it from the chicken scratch. And, you know, right. you know, she's making the notes for, for getting there. I could, that's all I needed. Was, OK, I'll well, second. Who, somebody moved. I'll move. We have a second and a motion. <laughs> Any further discussion regarding this? I think you're going to say this is an illegal procedure. Resolution. Hearing that, maybe we'll please. Uh, Ms. Moyer. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. Anything further from the fifth sponsor? No, I think that's it. Zoning inspector. It's, it's pretty quiet over here. Um, I issued a permit for a garage last month. And that's the only in-office uh, business. The Zoning Commission did not meet uh, last month. Um, the PUD uh, latest version is at Regional Planning, but it didn't get to them soon enough to be on their, for, it's on their March schedule, I think. <laughs> so when we get that back, we'll, the, and the Zoning Commission will have their public hearing, and then it will come to you all for your public hearing. Um, uh, obviously, it, it's, hard to, it's hard for me to work up any urgency on this, this project at this point, but I don't think that there, fortunately, there is any. Um, as you might ex expect, I'm getting more and more calls about, where can I build the township? What can I do? What? Yeah. What are the rules? Um, the, the, the real estate activity that's that's going on all around us, I guess, is is, is showing up in on my telephone as well. Yeah. Uh, no no problems, but just reporting where we, we haven't been overlooked in the, in the whole process. But those are the otherwise it's been it's been quiet. It's going to be an interesting year next year for your report as to how much buildings go. Yeah, how much actually happens. Yeah. Um, just real quick, the PUD latest version, that's not, what, is that what? what this is a change of the zoning code. Oh, okay, okay. This has PUD nothing to section. do with, with okay. the village. It's not actually and PUD. Okay. You guys just kind of trying to think of a great headline in the Yellow Springs News. Township considers yeah. PUD <laughs> requirements. Um, the township <laughs> approves PUD. <laughs> You don't so want to shorten the, the headline too much. The thing we got, it took me a minute to figure out that you sent an email way back with your mm -hmm. final thing. I thought it, it said something like changes, so I was trying to cross-reference, and I realized the thing you gave us was the whole rewritten thing. Mm -hmm. And um, Well, I mean, the, the whole chapter didn't get changed, yeah. but some things that were in the back moved up to yeah, the front so to, because it, it made more sense to the Zoning Commission to have them all together. And then, you know, almost everything got some changes in numbering and, and those kinds of, of changes. But the, the, the process for, for doing a PUD is essentially the same. It's the specifications that we no longer have PUDs for, for commercial and industrial and multifamily. We only have basically single family residential PUD. And that's the, the, the major shift from what used to be. Say, say that last sentence again, we only. We, we will only, the only kind of planned unit development, actually we're gonna call, it's planned development now, okay? Um, because the only units we're allowing are homes. Okay, so we're, it, um, we could call it planned residential development, I suppose, but we just left it in planned development. It, it was one of those interesting things in going through this. I finally said, you know, we always say, these, what units are people talking about? What are these planned units? Mm -hmm. Well, the original PUD concept, when it was first developed, but there were people were planning more than housing. They were planning a section of a community. So there were the, there were the houses and the apartments and the convenience stores and all these different units. But um, that's no longer appropriate for what's so what, what was the about. timeline you guys are going to? But whenever we make or propose a change to the zoning code, regional planning has to review it 
We don't, they, they, they can recommend it or not recommend it or suggest changes. We don't have to follow any of that, but we have to go through that process. And for them, their process requires an, ex an executive um, committee review and then uh, the full regional planning so they didn't commission review. This is the county regional plan. Can county regional plan. I just was, you know, no. oh, the county the regional plan. MVR. Yeah, okay. okay. Your MVRBC is, is the regional yeah. regional plan. And then it comes back to us after their little, the county? They, the, the county will, will say to us, probably in this case, you know, it's fine because they've already reviewed it yeah, that's right, once right. before, but there have been changes, so we have to go through the They will process. say to the Zoning Commission, they will not say it to us. Okay. Yeah. No, that, it is, its yeah. recommendation is for the Zoning Commission, not that you can't look at it or, you know, it's, it's all part of this, but the Zoning Commission is, will be making a recommendation to you to change it. And that's the, technically how the process works. And then, there's a public hearing? Or? Yeah. Do, uh, we turn, do we The last time, the, for the most part, when we have made changes to the zoning code, the public hasn't been interested. We haven't yeah. done something yet that's gotten people's attention. I'm sure of that. But I can't guarantee that there won't be a bunch of people at either of these meetings. They get advertised so, you know, by the normal means. But does the public, well, when does the public get to say, hey, here's something we're about to do? Well, it gets advertised, advertised 10 days in advance in the newspaper. And so it'll be in the Yellow Springs News 10 days before you, the meeting that you have your public hearing. The same way it'll be 10 and days before. The public hearing will be at one of our meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 then, then, and then it says there, you can come to the meeting and put in your two cents. Or you can call, and usually it's me, and you can give me testimony that you want presented if you can't appear yourself. Or you can just chew off my ear if you want to, and sometimes that's what people want to do. So the only question, how do they get it to read it so that they can chew off your ear? Oh, they, they would ask me for a copy of it. Yeah, this, this, this one's a little more complicated than most of the kinds of public hearings where you say, okay, we, we're, yeah. we're going to propose variance on this piece of property or whatever. This is a chapter of the code that's being modified. Um, I, would, I, would, I have it all in, in digital format, so for most people it just means they're asking for one an email to them. Okay. When you get done with your 10 lessons on planning, you will know all these answers. Well, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that no I, I realize that there's a lot of people who don't pay attention and that there, there might be, not be anybody interested in the changes. Oh, I, and, However, and I don't I, mean to be flippant and say I people just, aren't I interested. I just want to say, do we ever say, here's where you could get it, or do you have to say, I think I'll call Richard's up and ask for a copy. It'll say it in the newspaper where it could. Where, where I you know, will. Yeah, we, we, can, we can say anything we, can have we a PD, want and we, we can put it anywhere PDF we want. On our a link on our website. We can we can do that. You know, as soon as we've gotten to the point that we've got the document that everybody can can uh, review, it's no. There's there's no problem not <coughs> advertising. It's just a matter of we we go beyond what I personally can do. In other words, if we're going to put it on the website, somebody else has to do that. Okay. okay. I I can't just do it. I could. Okay. Put, make a printed copy to the library, you know, uh, that, that sort of, of thing. The difficulty, and when the Zoning Commission worked on the comprehensive plan, they begged people to come to information meetings to learn about it, and we hardly got anybody. Um, the, what year was that? Oh, that's been quite a while ago. We got elected officials, candidates for elected officials, uh, newspaper, and I believe there were two members of the public. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, oh yeah, we had everybody there to, to hear, to talk about it. Would this be roughly 2010? Yeah, roughly. I could, I could find and figure it out. Um, but the, and you have to realize that we have had We've gone through or used that PUD chapter 
twice in the history of township zoning. Okay? So you can understand why people may not be all that yeah. interested in it. And the, you know, the first time was on the order of 20 years ago, and more than 20 years ago, because that happened before I became zoning yeah. inspector. This is Golden Willow? Yeah, Golden Willow. And the second one was, uh, ended up being sort of an aborted attempt to, to use it to, not for what its intended purpose was, but by the same person that did Golden Willow. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, it's just not something that, that's caught the attention of landowners in the town. Yeah, I, I just think it, it, just for good form, whether anybody's interested or not, rather than have them say, hmm, I think I'll go try to find a copy of it and call up Richard's office, you'll probably make that yeah. clear no, that there's a soul the, out the, there. The other way of it. looking at it is that you'll find, you can say, oh, it's on the township website. Well, people don't know what the township website is either. I mean, yes, if they're good computer people, they'll Google Miami Township Green County. If they don't, they'll end up with Miami Township in Montgomery County, because that's the much bigger operation. Well, there are five Miami Townships. Yeah, and then across the state. You know, you know it's, okay. um, whereas a, a call to me gets it to them personally. So that's, you know, th there's advantages to both. And we'll, we'll do both. And the library, too, that's in the library. I remember. In the good old days when we used to get public documents from the yeah. library. Yeah. Anything else, Richard? No. Thank you very much. Margaret, that reminds me, did we slash you send the zoning code to um, no. the recorder? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't say no before. I thought you were going to say no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, took, I took the updated version. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. And, and, and I paid $50 out of my pocket, and we're, you guys reimbursed me. We're compliant then. Yes, and okay. um, I, now I need to just go pick it up because they, it, it's it comes like this, uh -huh. and I had to stand there in the office and <laughs> take it out. We, we can't take this. Uh -huh. So really? now it's now it's it's all uns unspiraled, but it's down there waiting on me to, just to pick it up. Okay. I keep forgetting. Uh, <laughs> Margaret, would they let me pick it up if I walked I would in? Think. I've got to go to Xenia tomorrow. Get it. Get it. It's on the, I'll, third, I'll it's on the third floor. I'll try to remember. This is a hard one. To... It's on the third floor of um, the county auditor's office, that building on the corner, you know. Yeah. 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 yeah just... Anything else for zoning? Tell them what Margaret says. Uh, new business. New business. The one new business I have is the uh, aforementioned planning and official training that begins on uh, Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, runs bi-weekly for however many weeks to get through them at various locations around the county uh, including Miami Township on April 27th. Uh, once you're registered you can go to one session, you can go to all of them. Uh, you don't have to confirm that you're going to any particular section. Um, and highly recommend it. Yeah, this is I actually for I have that I'm excited about it. I have uh, sent a copy of this to all of our planning commission members, um, inviting them to go. And they I don't know, we'll have to see if they show up and they, yeah. they won't tell me. Can, Chris, can you explain to me I was trying to decide what to do with that information and I got the information from regional planning and then I got an email that said we rescind this information or something like that. And I couldn't understand whether I was. Yeah, it had I something to do with something with it or not. It, it, it had something. Uh, that was a while ago. It had something to do with the information that they sent about the time and place, and something was incorrect in it. So they rescinded that message because there was one right next to it, right yeah. after it, that had whatever the corrected information. Okay, was. I just it wasn't clear to me what the difference yeah. was between the first yeah. one and the second one, and I, I wasn't the sure whether exact same thing. Yeah. What I should send out. You're quite clear the one you gave me is all the correct information. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and I'm glad so you passed it on to the commission members, so that's good. We'll see if any of them will put some energy into that. Yeah. Any other new business? I hope so. Any other new business? Any old business this evening? Um, Don, did you just want to mention your daily activity today and uh, what's coming up Wednesday? Okay. Uh, all week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe Friday, uh, there's a 
hearing, a virtual hearing of the Ohio Power Siding Board regarding the Kingwood Solar proposal. And so I'm listening today and tentatively I am testifying on Wednesday. Testimony means I've already submitted a written testimony which at our special meeting uh, yeah. last week uh, the board endorsed um, the, the substantively there wasn't anything in it other than our opposition uh, and so when I'm on it will be I'll be asked questions by the Kingwood's attorney. Uh, well, you'll be cross-examined. So yes. Um, and it goes from 10 a.m. to 5:30 every day. <laughs> and it's uh, it's pretty intense. Um, I thought I had it bad at the public hearing. <laughs> that was only one day. That well, was. right now I'm just listening, but I. So I'm, I'm scheduled for an hour. I don't think it'll be an hour. Maybe. I know it's uh, interesting. At the public hearing, there was the the, the two attorneys, were solar and anti-solar, were sort of going, you know, doing some questioning, and then they just sort of stopped. It's like, oh, this isn't worthwhile. Mm -hmm. yeah, this one seems more, a lot more formal. Uh, well, this is, you know, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you. Any other roll of business? I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. I second. Motion to second. We are adjourned by acclamation. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you. And everyone for watching. Good evening.